Okay, my name is Stephen Price. I'm the EC for Cherokee County Amateur Radio Emergency Services. And this presentation is not specifically geared toward Aries. So please, you know, stick around. This is not just the Aries presentation. So what is a go box, right? For those of you who do not know what we're talking about. A go box is a framework or enclosure to a frame or enclosure where equipment and accessories are mounted. This can be for rapid deployment, ease of carrying, or even for environmental protection. It's certainly something that Marty was talking about with the considerations. So we've got two different go boxes here that I've even given images of, right? We've got an SKB case with, with a VHF radio, an HF radio, power supply, two signal links, and he's got a speaker right in the middle. Everything just about that you need in a go box. That sucker's heavy though. Very, very heavy. You're not hiking them out the top of that thing. And then we have just a small little go box right here. I would even consider this a go box, even though it's not an enclosure, it's still a framework that you can mount equipment on. All right, so when you think of a go box, you know, we, we shouldn't just say go box, it's really more of a go kit, right? Yeah. right that, you're, that you're mounting equipment on. But in the simplest form, this is probably the simplest go box I have ever seen. Very, 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 very simple. That you can climb a mountain with. Yeah. Right? You can throw that in a backpack and, and climb with it if that's what you want to do. You mind describing that, Steve? Yes, sir. So, Darren, there are two pieces of equipment. Uh, pieces of equipment are a HF radio and a, a little power supply. It might, might even be a battery pack, I think, nice. that are mounted to what looks to be a metal frame that are, that's just surrounding the radio. The battery pack is mounted on top of the radio, and both of these are small little, I'd say, 8 by 6 by 4 pieces of equipment. I mean, honestly, very, very small, yeah. and that'd be a, a great little get up and go uh, piece of equipment. So the considerations. This, this is just for me when I'm building the go box. This, this is what I do first. I take, I, I take these, these items into consideration. I say, okay, what's the purpose of the go box? What's the core equipment that needs to go in the go box? And I mean the core equipment. What's the auxiliary equipment that I want to bring into the go box? What cables and accessories do I need to put in, in my go box? What's the deployment environment? Where, when I'm deploying this box, or this kit, what's the environmental factors that I need to consider? And as well as the physical location that I'm, that I'm going to with this go box. All right? So the purpose of the go box, one of four, there, I'm sure there are more, but we've got summits on the air, right? Which is where you go to mountain tops and activate these mountain tops. Uh, if Joseph Ladd were here, he could talk yeah. more about it. Yeah, uh, he was sorry he couldn't be here. Uh, I know. I just, just showed up. Yeah, and I'd love to see his his, his little his little yeah, pack that he has. Nice. He's got a little a little go pack with a radio, an HF radio in it. We've got uh, public parks on the air. We've got ARL field day, and of course Aries. All right. So there are, there are at least four main purposes of, of go boxes, if not more. That's all I wanted to list. Next, the core equipment. What core equipment needs to go in your go box? Your radio, whether it's HF, VHF, UHF. Okay, your antenna tuner, if you're going HF, and then power supply or battery. That is the core equipment that you need in the go box. That's it. It's very simple. That's at, at the core. And we saw that back here on this little rig right here. Right? And heck, he's not even using a tuner. It's going up. I bet you didn't mention a tuner in there. Yeah, his antenna on the on the first picture that I described to you, Darren, Sorry, tuner. which is just the, uh, the radio and the battery. There's not even a tuner there, so he's probably got a, 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 an antenna that's cut straight to it. Right. Maybe it was or he could have one of those little tiny pieces. Oh, yeah. That's a bar antenna. Yeah. Yeah. What's that thing on yeah. top there? That's, that's a power supply or a battery pack. That looks a lot like that amp 3. Yeah. Uh, uh, it may be. So, but I mean, that's just, just a little mm -hmm. little rig. So again, that's that's the core equipment. That's all you need to communicate. Yes, sir. Yeah, how much... Um, <clears throat> Thought is given to, like you were saying, the weight, but then also like the runtime. Let's say you assume a 10 or 15 or 20 percent duty cycle. Yeah. How many of these things could realistically operate on them on their own for four hours with a 10 to 15 percent duty cycle? Yeah, that, that depends on the, that depends on your your power output, right? How much <coughs> you're transmitting, whether it's digital right. or voice, mm -hmm. and of course your power supply or battery. And I think all of that needs to be taken into consideration when you're considering, which is one of the factors I'll get to in a minute, which is your weight and where are you operating from, right? So, so remember, the go box itself is generally speaking your, your core equipment, which is your radio antenna tuner and then power supply or battery. If you've got to have a generator, 
<coughs> and obviously you're not going to carry a generator. Or a computer or a, PC. a, a seat yep. or a bench to put yeah. it on or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. So all those, absolutely, you've got to take into, into, into account. And those are something I've, I've accounted for as well, and I'll show you. Yes, Al? Uh, shouldn't this actually say antenna and dinner? No. Because I, because, and I'll, I'll tell you why. The antenna doesn't go in the go box. Right? Generally, that would be an, ex, that would be an accessory that's, that's external to it or that's packed in my backpack or something like that. <laughs> good, 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 good. <laughs> and, but for me personally, I, I try to keep everything. I didn't, I didn't want to get too much outside of you know, the core actual equipment. Auxiliary equipment, TNC signal link laptop, headphones, speakers. Power distribution and lighting and clock or time, right? I want time for an air, for an Aries, for an amateur radio standpoint. I want a clock. Some guys might not like it, so that's, that's just auxiliary, right? You may not need lighting, right? The first the first radio we saw has barely has any. Dan's go box. If you're looking over here to the right, he's got lighting built in on that little lighting bar, right? Even I'm on my firm in here, I've got lighting that comes out. So there's just there's different different things that are auxiliary that aren't necessarily core or necessarily needed, but they're nice to have or you may need to consider them. All right, and clock. Okay, cables and accessories. We've got power cables, antenna cables, audio cables, and data cables. We've got to take into consideration all of those and take those. Uh, consider what the weight is. Mm. Consider what the lengths of them are. How many you need? What do you need to run them, and where where they need to be mounted inside that kit? Mm. All right. And then the deployment environment, the weather, the noise, lighting, and security. Mm. All right. What's the weather going to be like? Do you want and do you, do you just want a frame if it's pouring down rain? Right. If it's if it's noisy, what what type of accessories do you need? Do you, do you need headphones in a noisy environment, or is it, or is it a very very quiet environment where you've got to put headphones on because you don't want to disturb the rest of the people around you? And what else are you operating, right? And how much noise is it going to make? If you're doing if you're doing Morse code, is it possible that your gear is going to disturb the people around you? Yes, sir. Having worked shelter operations when I was living in Tampa, um, noise is a very big factor, especially if you're set up in a main area. Yep. Because I found that there were times that when you've got, you know, 150 people in an auditorium or a gymnasium like the USF Sundome where I was at one time, you're look, you have to listen very carefully to hear your, your radio yeah. traffic. Yeah, and vice versa. When our guys were at ARC, American Road Cross, helping for the Super Bowl, they were, they were in, an, in an area where people were sleeping right near them. So there was, a, there was, there was quiet time. Right, ARC had, had quiet time where they had to be be quiet. Well, you know, at that point you're going to be keystrokes and headphones, right? If you're lucky. Okay. Security is something else. Uh, if you're deploying, if you have a mobile repeater, right? Let's say you want to you want to drop off a mobile repeater, and you're going to leave. What are you going to do with it? You know, do you have a chain? How do you how are you going to secure that that piece of equipment to make sure no one gets it? Are you going to put in a little a little tiny tracker to it with it as well and make you know mm -hmm. see where that thing goes? So these are just environmental considerations that you need to take into account before you deploy your piece of equipment, right? And as you build it. And then the location. What's the terrain you're deploying to, right? Can you roll your go box to where you're going to go? Is it nice and paved? Or are you going to have to carry it? Is it, is it uh, you know, gravel road? Are you carrying it up a mountain? How about distance from the vehicle? How far are you carrying that go box? How far are you rolling the go box, or distance from your drop-off location, right? And then, what about special transportation? Are you flying? Are you getting flown somewhere? Are you taking a boat, right? <laughs> so you need to take those things into consideration. You're not going to take that little that little open frame radio on a boat and sit there and try to cover it up. You want to make sure it's it's nice and and, uh, and protected. Protect your investment. That's a lot of money in that little framework. <clears throat> just have water ruin it. Okay, so just a review. Considerations are the purpose of the go box, the core equipment that goes in the go box, your auxiliary equipment, your cables and accessories, the environment you're deploying in, and the location you're deploying to. Okay, and a couple of go here are two different go boxes that we got in the picture, and these are what are are in uh, uh, um, suitcase style Pelican cases. 
where they where they where the lid latches open. Um, we've got the power supplies that are built in, as as well as the power distribution and the radio on the left. This guy looks like he's got a clock up here. I like it. Put some, put some pouches, and right clock over here as well to the right. And they've got they've got two different interpretations. One guy used a cutting board, another guy used used wood here. But uh, both are both are, are, are deployable go boxes. My only my only concern with these type of go boxes, and this is why I, I personally don't particularly like to build my go boxes this way, is rain. You go to a table, you open up, and then and rain has the capability to get inside that go box. And the other, and the other factor is going to be heat. So their power supply, even though they've got the fans there, those power supplies are going to get going to get a little warm. So I'll, you know the radios are, are open air cooled, so those should be fine. But Still, I'm, 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 I really, I don't like necessarily to have any sort of opening for, for water to come in straight down on. Generally, side access, panel access, is just my personal preference. Okay. All right. Now, design considerations. All right. Weight. Transportation. Internal and external dimensions, which include depth, width, and height. Heat. Your connections. Mounting. And overall cost. Okay, so as you design your go box, we know we know we know where we're going with it now. But how are we going to design it? These are the fact things to take into consideration. This sucker is a hefty go box, right? It's got a screen. Is that like a 10U or 12U? Yeah, or yeah. And I think I think he's doing slow scan TV. Yeah. I think is what is what is what that go box is for. So that, that's a big boy. That's a big. One. <laughs> okay, weight. All right. Take you gotta and pardon these these icons. I couldn't get a uh, PowerPoint to get them out without a lot of reworking my presentation. So just disregard the icons. Weight, right? The equipment has the weight. Accessories and cables create weight. What's your personal capability? How much are you able to lift? Right? For me, I I, I build my go boxes personally so that I can carry them and so my wife can carry them, so that people can help me carry them. Yeah, I think not that one. These, see, this, this was iteration one, right? This was mistake number one. Then I, then I broke everything down. And then the enclosure, how much does the enclosure weigh? So, so you've got to take all of those into consideration. So certainly a lot of guys will, will, will the ham can, the hammo can, if, everybody's, if anyone's ever seen that, little go box. And then, of course, the battery. Consider how, how, how big of a battery are you guys lugging around? Do you really want to lug that thing around, right? Same thing with a generator, by the way. When we were at uh, the Georgia Death Race, Stan, Stan had a uh, a generator which was a single hand carry. Awesome, wow. awesome. Rob and I, Rob came over, picked up my my, my two man team lift generator. We left that sucker in the truck, never never even powered it up. <laughs> waste of time, you know, waste of space, waste of weight. So that 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 that's going to get sold, and I'm going to go down to a person, I'm going to go down to a single lift generator. Same thing with the batteries. Personally, 35 amp hour batteries are about the largest I'll go when it comes to batteries. Because that's something that, that generally people can lift up pretty well. Okay. But just take into consideration, how much does the enclosure weigh? How much are your accessories going to weigh? You know, how big is that laptop you're, you're toting around? You saw the you saw the first picture where, where it was us in front of the big red truck, and we had monitors on that table. A little monitor around? You know, that's, that's a lot of weight. Transportation, right? Transportation, are you carrying it by hand or by backpack, right? Are you, are you moving it by luggage wheels or casters? Are you moving it in a vehicle? Are you moving on, a, on aircraft or watercraft? Or is it getting couriered? It's being shipped, right? In Puerto Rico, those, those uh, radios were shipped, if I'm correct. They were shipped over, right? So do you want your, your radio to be actually able to handle, uh, handle being shipped? I personally wouldn't do it, but when you a point on that is that the kind of box that you buy would make a difference because yeah. shippable boxes are almost double. The yes. Boxes. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 We use a they lot of them. A lot more. A lot, yeah, yeah, a lot more. The weight's got to be also. Locking holes. Yeah. Yeah. A lot more. Certainly. Expensive. A lot more. All right. Yeah. The dimensions. This is something that I, that I personally get into a lot. I, I use an Excel spreadsheet and I lay out the dimensions of my equipment. I lay out the dimensions of the container. I then lay out the dimensions of the equipment. And I lay out the dimensions of the shelves. 
I figure out, how, it's, it's like Tetris to me. How am I going to fit everything in? <laughs> right? How am I going to make sure I've got airflow for my equipment? But, but certainly I wanted to post, you know, this, this gentleman gave some pictures that I found online where he's got his go box, he's got his mounting brackets, and then it shows how he mounted all of his equipment. And um, it's, he definitely, he loaded this stuff in. I've got some more pictures here in a second. Heat, considerations of heat. What generates heat inside your go box? Everything. Everything, right? <laughs> the transceiver, the power supply, the laptop, those are the, those are the big boys. Mm -hmm. Okay, now look at this. This is a, a red go box. He's got everything set up so he can carry it, so he can roll it. And then he's going to turn it and sit it down. Now the lid, unfortunately, is going to close on him when he, when he props it open, but there's nowhere for the heat to go in that go box. So it's a, it's a bucket, it's a trash can he's got everything in. You know? Same thing here. It's a great, great, nice little go box. Again, this is one of those suitcase, sounded like, kind of like the, the, the Pelican case. I want to be over here. But where is the heat going to go? That radio is sitting straight down. It's a Chinese made radio. Yeah. And I know long, the, the cooling fans are in the back of those yeah. radios. So yeah. Yeah. You've got to take it. No, you can't. But, you know, and I get it. It, it looks cool. It's got a nice, nice Lexan looking uh, plate over it. But how, how soon is it going to die? How's it going to do maintenance to it, by the way? Mm. It's accessibility. Mm. Not good. The connections. Get your power connections, your audio connections, your data connections, your antenna connections. All right? Where do we want these, these connections to be? Right? Do we want all of our connections right on one plate? Maybe. All right? Simple for grounding, I guess. Mm -hmm. But well, what's your interference going to be? Right? If you've got if you got a poor connection right there with the antenna right next to your USB port, you're going to fry that laptop? Maybe. Can you get that out very easily to, to, to work on it? And, man, it, do we make sure that those are, the power connections are nice and uh, uh, safe so that we don't have your audio cable getting loose and just dropping on your, your DC power connection and frying your laptop? Mm -hmm. So just take all the connections into consideration. Where do you want to put them? Certainly, on, on, I'll show you here on, on a couple of the go box that I've built. I, I've, I've taken that in consideration, and in, in my VHF go box, I've brought all my connections to the front, just about, except for antenna and power. I love those at the rear. But everything else I try to bring to the front. So, uh, on some of the other go boxes, I think you'll see similar, similar items. And last but not least, how do you mount this stuff? In the first part of the presentation, the first picture you saw Bob's go box, which is an awesome wooden go box that he custom built. Really cool, little handle on top, doors on the back, very accessible and very easy to work on. Versus something like this, where everything is custom wired, it's zip tied in, you know? But it, it is fastened to metal plates, okay? And we've got wood mounting up here, but how are you gonna mount it? Are you gonna use Velcro? Are you gonna use double-sided tape, fasteners, or shelves? What are you using? <laughs> Take all of this in consideration, okay? And last but not least, cost generally what, what guides the cost of go box. So you can certainly fit everything into one hefty, hefty go box that weighs a lot. Or you can maybe even use what you've got laying around frame-wise or metal-wise if you're if you some tack welding. Okay? But just for cost, you've got equipment, you've got the shelves, you've got the enclosure, and you've got the cables. Those are generally the what are the those are generally what, what what have the highest cost. Okay, so final thoughts. It's important to take a step back now and think about how you're going to use your go box. Can you carry it or it, will it fit where you're going to place and operate it from? Think about how you're going to make the connections and how often you are checking them or changing them. For example, the antenna connection or a data connection to the radio. Do you want those connections in the front or the back? Right? Think about how you'd be operating the radio. Will it be comfortable, will it be comfortable to operate that radio with the way you've got it mounted in your go box for an extended period of time? Right? So some radios do not have a detachable faceplate. And if you've got to sit down and, and lean out and tune the frequency, or you're sitting there all the time, you've got to sit in a chair and you can't get up, that may not be comfortable for you. Okay? And you split your go box into multiple go boxes. Right? I'll show you here in a second, but I've done that here. I have a VHF, UHF go box, I've got a power supply, and I've got an HF go box. I've split it all up and made it modular. Okay? And did you make sure, this is very important, because this is stuff I've seen at Field Day, and it, 
Did you make sure the connections are safe for you and others who are working in and around your equipment? Mm -hmm. I've seen go boxes where there's there's live DC power connections that are on the rear of the box that are not capped at all. Mm -hmm. I think that's stupid. It's a bad idea. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah. And then, did you label your connections? <laughs> <laughs> it's something I'm very bad at, but I, I was doing last night as I was preparing for this. <laughs> all right. So, uh, any any questions before I? I just like your idea of the of actually the breaking them up into multiple boxes makes actually a lot of sense, especially if you you are only going to have, for example, an HF rig in one box and you're going to have a VHF rig in another. Because you may or you may depend right. upon your situation not have needed both of them. That's right. So you only have to take just the VHF box and then you know whatever other box you got with accessories. Yeah. And the same thing so goes with makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And when we were at the death race. Yeah. So these are these are my personal boxes here. When we were at the death race. I was using the VHF UHF Go box, and then goodness, uh, Dave David Poss came for I forget his name. No, Bruce Poss, right? right. Yeah. Um, came for EIH, I think. Uh, he was using the the 7100. So we were able to split the Go boxes. If we were operating out of just one Go box, certainly we could have taken a head into the 7100. But still, the connections were all there in that in that Go box. He was able to just slide it on over. And you were sharing the battery between both units? Power supply, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. What is, we're not we're on both trains at the same time, you know. What is the amperage on your uh, power supply? I think it's a 32 amp. But, no. so something that I, actually, let me segue. So, oh, goodness. Ah. So when you say power supply, that means you have to be plugged in or you actually have battery? I don't understand. I have both. Both, okay. So, uh, and in, in, I took it out because I needed to work on it, but, in that, in the in the power supply go box, I um, I actually have a um, oh goodness, what is the distribution box? No, it's it's uh, it, rig, runner. rig runner. Yeah, rig so runner. I use a rig runner inside the power. I put the pa the the rig runner inside the power supply go box. Nice. So that I'm operating off power supply, then I hook my battery up, keeps the battery topped off, and if the power supply fails or the generator fails, I fail over. But I mount the rig runner in the power supply box because I don't need a rig runner mounted to the side of my of my battery, right? And I don't I don't put personally I don't put power distribute a power distribution block inside the power supply. I've got power distribution blocks inside the VHF and UHF go boxes. So and give me just one second, I'll show you kind of the, the layout of, of these. The, of these go boxes. You went over that awfully fast. I did? Yeah, some of those new guys might. You know what? That's good. Then they can come to me with any questions. They can go to you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, 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 it makes some sense, but if you have pictures of, of what you did, I do. Yeah. That, 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 that'll, that'll yeah. show you. Yeah. What you mean. So, let's see if I can. <laughs> yep, so this is a 5100. So this is this go box here. I'm sorry if you can't see it too well, but we've got the 5100. The radio is here. So sorry, it's an SKB case. It's a 19 inch wide case. It's a 4U case. So four U's to be mounted in this case. There are two shelves, a free a free U, and then I have a 12 port Keystone patch panel. That's a that has blank Keystone ports on it. What I've done is I have an RJ45 connector for my microphone. I've got a spot for my 5100 to sit that's magnetically mounted to the front of the plate. And then, I know you can't see these, but these are actually USB connections on the front. So when I, when I sit my laptop down and I want to do digital, I take a USB cable and plug it straight to the front of my Go box. Everything's right there. It's accessible. So if I want to connect directly to the ICOM and, use, and do uh, digital data or do DRATs or do some reprogramming, not Bluetooth, but it's in. Um, I'll, plug, I'll plug into the ICOM port. If I want to go and do, and do uh, packet with my TNC, I'll plug my USB cable into the TNC port. If I want to do audio coupling, I plug my USB cable into the signal link port, or I plug in all three if I want to do all three. And then furthermore, I've, I've got the headset speaker and headset microphone. I'm still wiring those in, but if I ever want to use a headset, I've got 3.5 millimeter uh, three conductor plugs for headset. Yes, sir. And all of this is either flush or recessed, so it's rain yeah. uh, uh, safe or whatever yeah. you're saying? That's exactly right, right here. Yeah. And so, I've also, so the 5100 is a little, little bit tricky, I'm not going to go into it, but I had to, I had to use the microphone 
and speaker ports in the back of 5100. So I brought those out, I'll show you here in a second the rear connections, but I brought them out, pinned them out, and I brought them into an, into an AB switch. So when I want to use my microphone, I've got the AB switch to mic. When I want to use the TNC, flip it down. When I want to use the signal link, flip it down. And when I want to use a headset microphone, I flip it down. What's really cool though is the way that I wired it up. Even if I flip down the TNC, my microphone still works. So I still have microphone control, so I can still change frequency, go up and down, do whatever I want. Okay. okay. What? Just for my own clarification, what is a Keystone port? That's not a, a something I'm familiar with. Yeah, Keystone port is is generally what you'll see on, on wall plates or data or voice connections. Oh, okay. So it's a stand. It's an industry standard connection. Right. Which is fantastic because the, you can find Keystone jacks. Right. Okay, something I found on eBay, which is really, really yeah. Cool. I was going to say you can actually, find. Stephen, the thing that would be good when we pu I'd like yeah. to publish the slides of course, sure. on the website, but what would, would be nice is if you could compile some notes of the yeah. sources. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Amazon. Yeah, yeah, yeah the sources. <laughs> yeah, we know, but I think you know. No, I will. I'll list out the jacks. I think it everybody. helps because then you know people can go directly. Like, oh yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, so, yeah. It's because these are you know you've yeah. got USB keystones. Yeah. You've got 3.5 millimeter audio keystones. These are female. And then we've got RJ45 810A conductor piece of female. So everything up front is modular. That was the idea well, behind all this. Yeah. Okay? Uh, took, a, took a lot of wiring, but yes, sir. Now explain how to the guys back there. It's, it's easy. Up. What? How do I power yeah, it up? Yeah. Plug in the power. <laughs> and then I push this. This is the red button. That's the power button. It's got a power indicator on it. But yeah, just plug it in. Now, this is something that. Go ahead. Done. Go ahead. I, I, you get me, man. Come back, come back. I'll get to the next one. When does that die? You are, oh, you plug it in. It's not a slide, I forgot. You plug it into a battery or a power supply or. Yeah, I'll show you actually here, right here. Okay. So, this is the back of that go box. This is what's. I'll get to this in a second, but I have all of the connections where the cables are coming in pulled out and labeled as well. So the connections are modular on the back, so if I ever have to troubleshoot, I can do that as well. Okay? So this is just, I've, I've got the connections that are, that are going to that AV switch. I actually have the connections on the pulled out and pulled to the rear. And I had to do that anyways because of how I had to do the, the cable manipulation for bringing the audio and the microphone out of the 5100, looping it around a little bit. I've got a, I've got a graphic or a, um, a graphic I can show people or send you all if you like. And then sending it back into that AV switch and, and having everything work. So it took a little manipulation of the wiring, but generally speaking, it works, right? I can, I can use my 5100, my radio, I can use the signal link, I can use TNC, I can use the microphone. It's all selectable through a ABCD switch. Okay. The, other one, the other one is a good consideration too when you're doing this back, especially the back wiring. I think part of it is, is make sure that you get as much separation between your RF mm -hmm. and everything else. Yep. If you want to cable tie stuff together, whether it's you know power, audio, those, those are all pretty compatible with mm -hmm. one another. You never want to cable tie your coax or an RF to to the audio or anything like that because it's going to couple into it pretty strongly. Depending on what power you're using, so you're using an HF rig. You could actually cause damage to the other equipment. So you got to be a little bit careful on the, on the cabling, and especially that RF. Is, yep. However, you need to create as much distance as possible between that and everything else. Yep. And that's, and that's what I did here is I, I pulled all the connections up to the top. I left the antenna connection on the bottom. Yep. So everything goes straight up. I've got a, an audio splitter here. But, but moving from right to left, so these are RJ45 keystones as well. Okay, 8 pin, 8 connector keystones. I'm just, it's just 8 pins, 8 conductors. This is something that I found on eBay, which is awesome. These are Anderson power pole keystones. Oh wow! Cool. Yep. So, so I, so what's interesting, and to Bob, to your point, so <coughs> my power supply, I have a power distribution block on the inside here, which you all can't see. This is an input. This is 40, uh, 40 amp fused input going to my power distribution block. This is output, 30 amps. So now I can daisy chain my go boxes together. That's exactly right. So I go power supply into my 51, my VHF UHF, and then from the 5100, from the VHF UHF, I can daisy chain it over to my HF radio. 
I still have to do the same thing on the back of the HF radio. I'm not done yet. These are always a work in progress. They're, generally, they're never finished. <laughs> they're never finished. But generally speaking, this, this was an interesting idea to be idea. able to go in. Well, it's, it, you've standardized your connections. It's an easy connection on, on, on the rear plate to make. And they're, they're easy to make. You know? And you're not finding that cable. You're not hunting or trying to go into the box. The idea was to have all of the connections flush, all of the connections with just a single plug where they're labeled, go to walk up, troubleshoot it, work on it. That was the idea. So this is this was a, a fair amount of work, but I, I hope um, if you have any questions on it, please let me know. Yes, sir. Did you did you the uh, the Keystone mounting? Was that a standard rack mount? Yes. Or did you yes. <coughs> no, the standard. It's like that thing's maybe twenty dollars on Amazon. But just 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 take this into account though. Keystone jacks are expensive. Yes. All right, you're paying three to five dollars per jack, per jack, per jack. So it gets expensive, and you've got it, and you do need to make your cables. But, but when you do this, after it's laid out, in my opinion, it, it really is a, a nice, clean box. It's a clean install. And I, did, I used Velcro as well here through the empty holes. I, this is a 12-port keystone, so, so it has 12 blank ports for keystone jacks to snap into. Um, I probably should have gone to a 16, but the 12 allowed the space for my 5100 to be mounted. I'm still not happy with how the 5100 face plate is mounted on the, on the front. That's certainly something that's a work in progress for me. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, uh, I, I like the idea of having these separate. Uh, you put everything in one box and you've got it all right there, but you really got to start disconnecting to get in, to get to anything. Yep. And I'm not old yet, but I'm looking in that direction. You know, <laughs> and and it's, getting heavy, it's getting harder to carry yep. really heavy stuff. But yours, at least they stack. And mine do not stack because they're home roots. Yeah. And uh, and I need to find a, a way around that because if I if I put the 5100 out and the 7100 out, yep. that's good. But I've taken a lot more real estate on the table, right. which is very often tight to yep. start with. Yep. So I need to figure a way to stack mine so that uh, so that I want to take a, a a little small footprint. That's exactly right. These these SKD cases, if you notice as well, I did not use the full depth SKD case. Right? So these are not full depth. If you look at, at this case here, this is this little, I think this might be a little deeper, but SKB makes makes full depth cases. They're great. These newer versions will stack the the, 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 the not as deep, the, the, the thinner version I'll call it, will stack on the fuller, on the full version as well. That's a that's an SKB, it's a rack mount enclosure, I think is what they call those. Yeah, but, but it's, you're saying it's shorter than the standard. Yeah, I, I don't know the I don't know the difference in the in the depth or, or yeah. in the phrase and what they call the, the different depths. <clears throat> but, you, you don't need the full depth ones. Well, I mean it's up to you, right? If you take a look at the at the HF box, yeah. you know, you yeah. the cover comes out, so you've got space. You know, you've got another inch and a half where things can, can, can push out. In fact, on, on my IT go, on my network go box, I actually mount a laptop because this is so large, it's got such a, a large uh, a front on it. I, I mount a laptop inside the door of this and can shut it and everything goes inside. And on the back, I've got even a box, I'm sure it's falling down by now. So uh, these doors are very, very helpful. Um, where you can even mount like little little cases for cables if you want to go and, and buy one of the one of the hefty son of guns. Uh, but they're 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 not expensive. New, these are expensive. Used, they're not. And guess what? You can find them used. Craigslist and Facebook. Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist is where I pick these cases up. I generally buy SKB cases for around seventy five dollars. Steven Dirt gun shows too. Yes, sir. Yep. So, just take that into account. I've I've tried to standardize. I'm, I'm I'm all about standardizing. I'm all about creating modular. That's just how I think and what works for me. So yes, sir. And each of those three boxes. I'm not talking about the Godzilla, yeah. but the little ones. Um, <laughs> each of those three has its own lighting because you said you can operate them separately. Yep. I did, I don't. So in here, I don't I don't need I don't I'm not using lighting. I haven't taken lighting into it. actually. Goodness. Don't. Don't. So yes, there is lighting. Um, I, so the last piece of the puzzle is that I'm going to put a, a, a female USB port right here. And I have a USB light that you plug right in and it will hang over. So I still have got to, I, I still want to add uh, those, the female USB ports, your standard USB charger port. 
I want to add a few of those so I can charge my cell phone directly from it, so just plug right in, and then do a USB light, and then if you've seen USB fans that you can... And you can also do the same thing with your power port. Wow, USB fans. Mm. Right. Out, what do you mean? Sorry? Your, your Anderson power pole would do the yeah. same water dispenser yeah. as a source for a lighter fan or whatever? It would be, but, but it would be that would be a little more expensive in my opinion because of the, the cost of the connections and the cost of the adapter. And they're not too they're not too expensive. But yeah, I would personally, uh, right, what do I what do I know I have? I know I've got USB connections. I know I've got USB lights. I know my cell phone needs USB, so that's I would personally I would I would go the USB route. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, you're you're absolutely right. So so one one last comment. When it comes to radio go boxes, I have found, my personal opinion, the four <coughs> U box is really the way to go. Yes, I agree. Yeah, three my my three U that I've got for the HF is just a tad too small. I wish I had one more U because then I could put the ex I could do the exact same thing that I've got in the VHF where I've got the, the actual uh, uh, where I've got the, the keystone plate. If I just had one more U in that in that HF go box, I would I would put a keystone plate. So you guys might see a three U go box so get on sale soon. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Any more questions? Another interesting thing is the depth uh, considerations in both the shelf and the box. They make 12, 14, and 16 uses. Yep. And I started, I ended up using a, a, a 14, no, I have a 16 inch box. I use a 14 inch shelf in the, on the top and a smaller one. On yeah. Yep. And the shelf, by the way, the shelf consideration, yeah. the shelving that I use are vintage shelves so that I can loop Velcro around them. Right, so if you get a flat shelf that's full metal, then the only thing you can do is, is double-sided tape or you know, whatever else. But with the vintage shelves, you're able to take Velcro and loop it around your radio and really secure your, your radio down. I, personally, I do a double-sided sticky tape to make it so it doesn't move forward and backwards, uh, and then and then uh, Velcro around so that it's not going anywhere. It helps with the ventilation too. It does, yeah. To have the slots in there. It cuts the weight. It cuts too. the weight down too. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, Interoperability with I think you touched on this a little bit with a vehicle. Yeah. Uh, you know certainly you could put a, a crossband repeat in your vehicle and work with a handheld away from your vehicle, but you can do the same thing with. Uh, or I'm asking this as a question. Sure. With uh, HF, because can't you do like over a network and you just string a Cat Five out there? Um, to a, yeah, I mean you could you could echo link it. I think is what you're referring to. And or I didn't even know echo link, but I thought. You could have like um, a network controlled radio where you could run, let's say, some sort of a head unit or a computer out just connected with an Ethernet. Yeah. yeah. And so you wouldn't have to have, you know, a 50 pound right. box and batteries. Yeah. And you could use the equipment in your vehicle. Is that a. Is that a so thing? I think at that point you, you, would, you would generally have to be either internet connected or you would use. I think a flex radio could accomplish that. But what I don't know on the flex radio is, is it a cloud, uh, that connectivity, is it a cloud application or is it, or, or are they doing, is it true host and peer, right? It, can I truly go take my iPad and specify the private IP address of that flex radio and go straight to it? Or do I have to go through flex radio's cloud, right? Kind of like the Blackberry thing back in the day when Blackberry went down. I never heard of That's before my time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Nobody realized it was cloud-based until that sucker went. Yeah. So. yeah. yeah. Another yeah. icon is not web-based. Put your IP address in. You got to make sure you got your firewall open to see it. Yeah. You can have your firewall it. Excellent. Steve which, is that the nut? Which one is that? The nut? Yeah, no, the 7610 yeah. has a built-in yeah. interface, yeah. and the 7300, you've got to run a server on your computer. Okay. Like yeah. 9100. But I mean, you could even do a I mean, you could honestly, you could do a signaling, just a simple echo link, echo link, or a simple peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, uh, simple type of application. Heck, you could use a walkie-talkie if you wanted to. Yes. Yeah. With regard to the ventilated shelving, um, how do the slots in the shelving line up with your uh, mounting brackets for Magically. your radios? Magically. Mm. Magically? Magically. They don't, but they do. Somehow they, they don't, do. but they do. Yeah, I mean, you, you just, uh, really, like my 5100 and the 7100, I did not use the mounting bracket. Okay. So I just, well, first off, my 5100 doesn't come with a mounting bracket. 
right? You got to buy that thing extra, so I'm not doing that. Oh so I, yeah. I just sit it right down. Again, I'll do a, I'll do a double sided tape. And right. That gets it. That gets it off the shelf. Just I try to buy the thicker double sided tape. It gets right. it off the shelf just a little bit, and then Velcro it around. Gotcha. It, honestly, when you when you go there. You'll just you'll move it a little to the left, move a little to the right. Get us put your signal link in. You'll it'll it somehow it works. Somehow it yeah, works. Somehow it works. <laughs> you're you're first. First. Exactly. It's not well, it's like yeah. Yeah. you got to pull back. Yeah, you got to pull it yourself. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah, the phrase I learned in EMT oh, yeah, school: if it works, go with it. Yeah. You just got to be careful. You don't block ventilation holes. Correct. Or ventilation and speakers. You got to know. You got to know your speaker. You got to know your ventilation. Is there is there time on my shelves? So I put out my shelves and, and just did the layout very carefully on the shelves. Yeah. So I was able to put everything in by yeah. it. And I moved and moved and moved just yeah. like you were talking yeah. In general, and you're right, by the way, when I design, personally when I design, I have the shelves out on the table. Yeah. I've got two shelves or three shelves, and I'll start laying the radios out. So, okay, this is going to go on top. Okay, I want, I want heavy bottom left, right, or do I want heavy bottom right? Um, so generally speaking, it's heavy bottom left. So at least I know when I pick up the box, I know that I'm going to pick it up on the right side. Just, just some you know, weird considerations. But again, I'm standardizing. I'm standardizing on where the weight is. The weight's on the left. Pick it up. Heavy bottom left. Okay, great. I can pick it up and swing it. I know I, I'm not, it's not going to be too cumbersome. And uh, you just take